Now we're in the office and the idea here is to explore a bit more of the idea of noble decay. I know that's a, a fundamental, a founding block of your work. And I think to explain that and all the ramifications it has for you as an artist, as a person, that would be really, really helpful for everybody. I didn't realise what my work was about, really, until quite some time after I'd been working with the paint in the way that I work the paint. So I was working part time for a couple of years. And then I moved into working as a full time professional artist and you get a rhythm. You're working regularly, you're working every day and you're working on paintings where you're layering and layering and layering. And it was some time later that I realised that there was something metaphorical almost okay. about what I was doing. Yeah. These layers of paint almost correspond to layers of experience that we have in our lives, good and bad. Right. So there's the time thing insofar as uh, outside architectural features face years and years of torment <laughs> from the sun and the rain and, and you know what we've discussed before. But that period of time imbues objects with a certain kind of patina and feeling somehow. And it was that feeling, I think, that I realised that I was focusing on. And so this layering and this noble decay idea started to coincide. And I started to sort of see this metaphor with experiences we, we, we all have. Right. So this would be in relation to your age, uh, your state of development as a painter and as a person? I think I was quite conscious of my age at the time when I moved full time. Uh, and I felt as though I needed to be painting paintings and working for someone who was my age, that, that was consistent with my age. And um, I mean, I'm getting on a bit. <laughs> and I felt as though the work needed to comment on that. Um, I mean, having said that, I still feel very young at heart. And I still feel as though um, there's a lot, a lot of time ahead, but changes of career late in life really focus the mind because you, you know you haven't got the same amount of time in this new adventure than you would have had, say, when you're 20. So there's less time. It's compressed. OK, bit of a curveball question now. Your paintings, are they about optimism or are they about survival? I think they're both those things. I think they, I'd like to think they're broadly optimistic because uh, these things are still there and they've been there a long time and they will still be there. They'll, they'll, they won't look as great as they did five years before, but they, they're clinging on and they're determined. Your idea of noble decay, you said things are not as beautiful as they used to be. Are you saying also that things are more beautiful because of their decay? Definitely. Right. In fact, arguably, um, they're more beautiful. Some surfaces, not all surfaces, not all objects. I mean, let's be honest, a lot of things that we see around us look terrible or awful. They, they have very little aesthetic merit or beauty to them at all. Uh, and by the way, I don't think necessarily things need to be beautiful to be worthy of artistic exploration and everything. Okay. Although... What we're talking about, I think there is a beauty in certain objects which uh, have weathered over long periods of time that makes them more beautiful than they were when they were brand new. And the paradox is, I'm the kind of guy that if I see some uh, bad paintwork on, on my own house, I'm the, first, I'm the first guy to get out there to sand it down, prime it and repaint the window frame or the door or what have you because I've been taught to look after things and preserve them for as long as possible. So there's an interesting paradox. But as an artist, I'm actually seeking neglect <laughs> in some, and abandonment in some ways. 
So I've had to reflect quite a lot about why that is, why artistically I'm interested in things that I would never allow to uh, go to rack and ruin. Well, in a real house, if you let it go to rack and ruin, you get water on your head through a, a leaky roof. Whereas with, with paint, with a picture, a painting, you get beauty. So it's, it's, it's not, there isn't that practical worry behind it, I guess. No, there's, there's not the practical worry and you feel a responsibility towards things as well. I think maybe there's something melancholy and sad about things which have been abandoned, which uh, possibly the romantic side of me uh, is attracted by. Um, you know, feeling sad about certain things which have passed and been gone. You know, the, the ghosts that you see of places the feelings and sense of which time has passed. And you, you, you can kind of connect with it slightly when you go to these places. Um, it does make you feel kind of sad, but it's not like a sad... I don't see that as a sadness in a negative sense. It's, um, it's almost like a nice feeling to have because it possibly complements with other feelings at the same time. And it might even make, make us feel more alive because you've seen you've seen what the effects of time will do and it's just a little maybe a little tap on the shoulder to say we'll make the most of this this experience in this time so it's maybe not so sad you can turn it's easy to turn that into something positive and optimistic i'd like to think so when when people either engage with my work or or, or occasionally buy my work and live with my work. I don't want it to be like uh, a, a, a sad um, vision of the future <laughs> that they've got, but actually for them to uh, enjoy the moment and make sure they're in that moment when they're looking at work.